Did I do it? Can you see me? <laughs> Good morning. Okay, I think I, there we are. Just going to get the chat pulled up. Um, good morning. Welcome to the Carla Marie Show. Um, you know, the best show around. Just making sure everyone can hear me. Uh, see, hi. I don't see no sound, so that's a good thing. Uh, so Anthony is not here, but he will be here. And I will give you that explanation in a moment. Why can't I see the chat pick? Uh, oh, baby Jake is in here. I see Rebecca in Jacksonville was in here. She got a shout out on the morning show podcast today because it was area code 324, which is Jacksonville. Um, Jolly Russian Buddha said, who let you touch the controls? Listen, I was a producer way before your brother was a producer on the air, I think. So I'm trying to think which one of us got to run the board first, and I think it was me. So hush. All right. Nope. Okay. I hate PCs. I literally hate them. Okay, so can you see the list? Yes, you can. Where's Anthony? <laughs> is number one on the list. Uh, Faking Your Death is number two. Cookbook Club, which I'm very excited about, is three. Coho, Colleen Hoover. And what do you think? I think Anthony added that. Because I don't know about that one. So where is Anthony? If you haven't been following along, quick update last Wednesday night. Anthony injured himself playing basketball. He assumed he tore his Achilles tendon. Wasn't entirely sure. Um, we He has been through the ringer trying to get doctor's appointments and getting through all the red tape. And I'll explain some of that so he doesn't have to do it when he gets here. But right now, this morning at a 6.45 a.m. Pacific time MRI appointment so I believe he's on his way back from there. However, um, he finally got into our primary care physician on Tuesday, Dr. Apfelbaum. We love her. She wrote a referral to a surgeon for him. And the surgeon's office said, unfortunately, your insurance won't let us accept this referral because your doctor is out of network. Now, Dr. A has been our doctor for a few years, but with this new insurance, she's not in Anthony's network. So the insurance company wouldn't approve it. So then he was back to square one with needing a referral for a surgeon. So there, uh, his insurance was like, well, this is doctors listed as your primary care physician. It's a doctor he's never even heard of. So he has an appointment with that doctor today. Um, but luckily he has the MRI done yesterday. He got an ultrasound and an x-ray. So we are moving things along. Um, and then we had this wonderful woman at ProLiance Surgeons yesterday who let him make an appointment for tomorrow morning, even though he doesn't have a referral because she's like, this is crazy that you're going through all of this and we got to get you in like as soon as possible. So she made him an appointment, but said, I can't like guarantee that it's going to stay on there until someone else realizes there's no referral attached to it. So we are hoping to get this referral in there ASAP today. But yeah, it has been utter chaos so oh I think I heard a door close yep he it's either him or a cat moving around um yeah insurance has been wild absolutely wild uh so he has the appointment but like could change at any moment okay so should I wait for him he's like banging a lot of things around he takes a bit to get up the stairs, so there's that. Uh, let's see. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> the hype train thing threw me off. Okay, we are at level five, and I can see all the things that are happening. Let's see. Lisa gave out two subs. Lacey P resubscribed. Thank you very much. Holgi resubscribed. Jen gave out three subs. Oh my God, life is a hike, resubscribed. So many things happened. Angela resubscribed. Danny from Florida. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Elise, Nicole. Oh, we got new followers. Nicole and Fantastic Witch. Thank you. Oh, another one. What happened? Oh, two days ago. Why was everybody following with us? And Hale Gein resubscribed. All right. 
It's so hard to do these things and talk. Veronica Marie, thank you. Naara, thank you. Red said you need a chairlift on your stairs. We do. This was the first doctor's appointment I didn't go to with Anthony. Um, so this is the first time he's driven since the injuries. Like he got hurt Wednesday and drove himself home. Um, not that he can't drive. It's just. There's a. <laughs> Why are you watching that screen? I don't know. I didn't want to click around because I hate PCs and all these things popped up. Just when go I... to OBS. Okay. Hi, Anthony. Good morning. Woo. How was it? It was good. Um, I gave. I can't pull up. I got there before anyone else. <laughs> like the worker? Yeah. Um, can you pull up the full chat? Yes, I and can then, do that. Um, I explained a quick rundown of the chaos that has happened with the referral mishap. Um, I said that you had your ultrasound and stuff yesterday. I did not give any results. Okay. And that you were at an MRI and that you have an appointment today. All and right. that wonderful woman, Dawn. I'll tell you what. The first thing, before I get into any of the, because uh, you slide over just a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, before I get into any of the, the specifics, I will say it is incredible how much a good attitude can save a day. Not even, like, just a pleasant voice can save a day because I started off yesterday with the, the annoying news, that I, and it was my fault, right? I, I realized I went to the wrong doctor to get a referral, so I couldn't get the appointment that I needed. And they were very kind on the phone. They weren't rude or anything like that. But I was just, after making, you know, days and days of phone calls, I was literally, I was at my end. Right, I was just I was ready to break down. Quite a broke way before that. And I finally called back the insurance to fit to sort some things out. And everyone that I've talked to at my insurance company has been fine. Like they haven't been rude or mm -hmm. anything like that. There but was that one guy that I don't think I think he answered the phone for his significant other that actually worked there. I don't think he knew anything. I mean, maybe, but he was fine. He wasn't rude or anything like that. Um, he still gave me all the information I needed. But this woman, Erin, who uh who answered the phone yesterday, she just had this pleasant voice mm. and kind of like upbeat um, personality that literally in that moment saved my brain. It saved my entire mental state that okay. day because if it was another down person, it just would have matched my energy and I it just yeah. would have been bad. No. Um, and like I said, no one else did anything wrong. I understand that other people have things going on in their lives too. Yeah. So I, I spoke to Erin. She helped sort some things out, told me what I needed to do. And then I made some more phone calls, got, got more scans, and had to call uh, ProLiance, which is a company out here. It's like an orthopedic company. Um, and Dawn was an absolute gem of a human being yeah she kept being it was almost like an infomercial she was like you know what you know what i can yeah. do and we were both like there listening. was a, there was a lot of like but wait there's more <laughs> <laughs> and i'm sitting there like i should have filmed the whole call but i was just sitting there like oh my god is this yeah. actually gonna happen and i was like what is this world that we're like can he get a doctor's appointment it was but crazy the re and the reason i bring that up thank you lisa for ah. that final gifted tier one sub that and jen uh, that took us over the edge. Hype train level five is now complete. Um, but the, the whole reason I went through that, and Jess from Minnesota, thank you very much. The whole reason I went through that just now, that little anecdote, was to remind everyone that just having a pleasant attitude and treating people like you care, yeah, it can literally change someone's yeah. entire day. And that's what it did for me. I was and not, not in a great place when I woke up and, and got the news that I had to make more appointments and, and whatnot and may have wasted some time yesterday but or the day before. But by the end of it, after talking to Aaron and Dawn, phenomenal. Well, you also never know. Like, Aaron and Dawn could be having shitty days today. They could. And, and I hope someone treats them today like they right. treated me yesterday. But, like, I think about when people used to call Elvis a show and there would be like, oh, my God, Carla Marie was so nice. I love talking to her. And then there were people that was like, Colonel Rick was a bitch. Yeah, both of them were probably right. <laughs> they could have been. <laughs> also, people that didn't get on the air it, thought it was my fault. Well, uh, sometimes it was. And let's see, I also saw 200 bits from Cardi Giacomo. Is that how you pronounce oh, it? Giacomo. <laughs> the Giacomo. 
That's right. It was DiGiacomo, right? Yeah. Um, anyway, thank you to everyone who supported the uh, the hype train this morning. Once we take these shots, hopefully pretty quickly, I'll get into the things that I know and don't know. Okay, so... Did you hit anything on the list yet? Other than where's, where's Anthony? Anthony? No. Okay. And we could skip some things, but... By the way, I was here before the show started. What were you doing? I was outside. So, I got here. You had already started the stream. And it was like four minutes into the stream when I, when I pulled up. And like I thought, the countdown? The countdown, yeah. And I thought to myself, if I get out of the car now, it's just going to throw things off. Because now I'm here. And I'm going to try to get upstairs before the stream starts. I'm going to try to get in position. Let Carla Marie just do her thing. And we'll start the morning as we planned. Instead of throwing things off just because I showed up a, a little earlier than anticipated. Yeah, your Martha's right. You wanted to make an entrance. Or, or that. Uh, Lori24247, thank you very much for that subscription with Prime. There is something cool that uh, Twitch has allowed us to do with subscriptions. And if you resub, so basically if you've subscribed for over a year, there should be an option. And I don't know how it works because it's brand new. There should be an option to customize how your alert shows up on the screen. Oh, that's now? That's now, yeah. So if you subscribe for over a year, so over over 11 months, you should have like four options, I believe, of different things that can pop up on the screen Um, right there somewhere okay so before we take this shot get that birthday song ready oh okay it's cardi's birthday hold okay. on amy and jeff at seattle cocktail club are getting married this weekend mm -hmm. my sister tina marie is her 50th birthday on sunday okay which is also father's day so we have all the things to celebrate so happy birthday happy celebration everybody we need a happy celebration get that back All right. Woo, there we go. You good? Mm -hmm. Nope. She's holding it for too long. Oh, and that's right. Brooke's birthday is on Saturday oh, as yes, well. Yes, 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 yes. So happy birthday to Brooke. You know what? Brooke deserves one of her own. <laughs> and Diva Woman's 54th wedding anniversary. That's cool. Oh, man, Brooke's going to be in double digits. Do you remember your double-digit birthday? Wait. I remember telling people, because for some reason we celebrated yes. it at my cousin Christina's house, from what I remember. And I remember telling people, I'm double digits now. I'm double, like, that's all I kept saying to people. I can't wait till triple digits. I was digits. real annoying <laughs> as a kid. Still I, am. I remember what one of the gifts my mom or older sister gave me for my 10th birthday, and it was a joke. But they gave me a pack of pads. Oh, like feminine pads. Yeah, I didn't okay. have my period yet. But okay. they were like, it could happen any day now. It happened three years later. Okay. Thank you. Did you keep those pads? Do pads expire? No. Oh, I'm sure they They've do. They've got to at some point, Everything right? expires, but nothing expires. So Okay. Yeah. All right, let's get into the list. So, fake your death. Okay, so I have the article up here just so I don't miss any. Um... Did we forget Jen and Lisa's birthday? Oh, shoot, it was yesterday. Carla Marie. Carla Marie. Wow. And our anniversary, our Twitch anniversary. Announcement anniversary. What? <laughs> Announce anniversary. Oh, what you posted yesterday, yes. Yeah, yeah. All right. Jen Happy birthday to all of the birthdays. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Lenny, be quiet. We didn't forget Jen and Lisa. I we mean, told them happy birthday yesterday. I uh, texted them. Someone kind of did. Did you? Did I text them? No. I don't really text anybody. That's fire. <laughs> I don't know why this is It's not a surprise. Uh, fake your death. What do we got, Carla Marie? Okay, so this TikToker faked his death. Okay. But, like, I believe his wife and kids were in on it. Okay. So That's they kind. knew, but they had a funeral. Oh, wow. And had people come to it. And he wanted to do this to test people's loyalty. And then this mother effer shows up to his own funeral in a helicopter. And that's that's a badass way to show up, I guess. Could first of all, so could you imagine that was one of your family? Like you thought your cousin died, and you're so sad, and they show up, and you're like relieved, but also like 
F you, dude. No, if if one of my cousins or anyone I cared about faked their death for a TikTok stunt, yeah. they're getting punched in the nose. Oh, my God. So Right what? in the nose. Like, I, I think my friend Hav is in the chat. I think I saw him earlier. Um, if Hav faked his death and then came back and was like, ah, just kidding, guys, <laughs> he would get punched square in the nose. So the So he's 45 years old, this guy. And yeah. his daughter posted on TikTok right before the funeral service. Rest in peace, daddy. I will never stop thinking about you. Why is life so unfair? Why you? You were going to be a grandfather and you still had your whole life ahead of you. I love you. We love you. We will never forget you. No, absolutely not. People are just doing wild things for attention. And I, so, I know people have always done wild things for attention, like basically throughout history, but... I think TikTok specifically, more than Instagram, more than Facebook, more than Twitter, I think TikTok specifically has made people do wilder things for attention. Right. Have you seen the guy? He, uh, it was so annoying because the world star posted him. What? I, before you go to this oh, yeah, crazy sorry. guy, what's the faking death thing? Yes. Well, and he said it was like interesting to see who showed up to the funeral. What who, if people were busy? Who, who didn't? And... He's like, even some people who didn't show up, like, reached out to me afterwards and were like, dude, what the hell? Like, let's meet up or whatever. But here, like, I would never do it. But part of me, I would love to know who would come to my funeral. Well, you could do a living funeral at some point. No, no, no. That, no. It's not the same. Why? When you're actually dying? I would love to see what people have to say to me when I die. Now. Like, if I died right now, what would, who would give my eulogy? You? Uh, maybe. I don't know. Should I? I don't know. <laughs> should we do a fake funeral service for each of us on no, the show? We no, should. we should. Well, we sh- we'll do it after we you should not. surgery. <laughs> we should not do that. Uh, apparently, this was, was this something? <laughs> let's see. Lenny from Queens said, didn't Bender do this in Futurama? I don't watch that. Yeah, I, don't, I've, I haven't watched enough Futurama episodes to know if that, that happened. Also, for the mailman, good point. The whole family needs to be punched in the nose. Everyone yeah. who is in on this. Needs a good bop to the nose. And I'm going to be very clear as to why it's a punch to the nose. Let me explain. It's not that I condone violence. But if you've ever gotten like a random shot by a basketball or something to your nose, it ruins that hour of your well, day. even just doing it doesn't hurt like this, <laughs> yeah. but it hurt. Wait, There's... I never taught that. I won't do it hard. No, I need to explain. do it to yourself or let me do it to you. No, I have to explain. (laughs) It doesn't hurt like this. Yeah. But it hurts like this, and you just push up. So It's my favorite game to play. I haven't done that. The reason I say someone needs to get a punch to the nose is you get those tears in your eyes when you get hit in the nose. It's a great spot to bop somebody. Yeah. It's a great, because it'll it'll ruin that next hour for that person. Um, But yeah, the whole family needs a good bop to the nose. Because it's just... The amount of grief you're going to put people through. Now, here's the other thing to always think about. To always think about with TikTok. Everyone could have been in on it. Oh, like the whole thing? The whole yeah. thing could have yeah. been fake. Yeah. And every time I see something wild on TikTok, my fir- or Instagram or whatever, my first reaction is, this is so fake. Yes. And there my- are so many BS accounts on there. And... I feel like I have a, a good, like, barometer of what's fake. Yeah. And my mom does not. And she just scrolls oh, yeah. through TikTok, uh, sorry, Facebook, and watches those cheesy videos. And I'm like, Mom, I'll say to her, Mom, they're fake. And she's like, yeah, I thought so, but they're still fun to watch. Yeah, and they could be. And I'm like, ugh. It's like Jerry Springer. But there's also the ones that I've always seen, and they're so fake, are the... um. My girlfriend thinks I bought her a car, but I'm going to tell her that I, I know she's cheating or whatever. And it's like such <laughs> and nonsense. And they hold the sign. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like they'll, they'll blindfold someone. And the, the best way to look at it is you click on all the accounts that are tagged in it. And if, if multiple accounts have over like 50,000. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. 50,000 followers. They're all fake. All of them. And even if the even if only one of the account has a, a good following, it's probably fake. Absolutely. Um, Diva Woman said, what if one person was so grief-stricken that they have a heart attack? How would you feel? And so that's what I was going to say. If I did this, my mom would probably die. Mm-hmm. Like, if I faked my death, my mom would probably go into cardiac arrest again. I don't know if either well, not about, again. She, 
you know, heart surgery. I'm trying to think if either of my parents, I'm don't get me wrong, they'd be very, Let's very sad. Let's call them up and ask them how they would feel if we died. <laughs> um, I don't think my, my dad would cry more. I think my dad's the crier of the two. Your mom would cry if you died. Oh no, both of them would cry. I'm saying my dad would cry more. Like my dad's side of the family, surprisingly, is is the really emotional side. The, my mom's side of the family is still emotional, um, but they they bottle everything up. It's kind of crazy when I think about this. Like, there not that there is no dad side of the family for me because they exist, but everyone like my side of it's just uh, like it's my immediate family and branched off. There's no, like, I only have two first cousins, and it's only on one side of the family. My dad was an only child, so it's like... So you don't really have a dad's side of the family. I don't, and I almost don't even have a mom's side of the but family. But you have your dad's, uh, his first daughters. Correct. So they're, they're technically your dad's side of the family. Correct, but I'm only close with one of them. Okay. So it's like, but that's my, not my dad's, those are, that's my sister. You know what I that's mean? True, like, that's true, I guess, so yeah, you're right. Cousins-wise, I don't have any first cousins on my dad's side. Or uncles or aunts, yeah. No, I have great aunts and uncles. But it's not like, yes, I would see them at holidays and stuff, but it's it's a very weird dynamic, and this proves that every family is different. Like, mm-hmm. my family is my my nuclear yeah. family, right? Like, my nieces, I know they're not technically, but to me, they're a nuclear family. They're my little sisters. So it's yeah. it's very... Because you also don't have that many of them. Nieces and nephews? Yeah. I have 10, 11. Yeah, but eventually, I'm going to end up... Well, I guess it's a little different. Like, my, my family, even if you include your nieces and nephews, my family is still much larger. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But that's what's crazy is, like, you have 35 first cousins. Mm. 34? 35? I will, you, if you have 11 nieces and nephews, your brothers are. Yeah, they're going to be popping off a lot of kids That's to do six that. and five. <laughs> I don't think that's And happening. there's more to come on my <laughs> side. So, like, it's, families are wild. I don't know. Uh, life is a hike said I only know one side of my family and there's 38 first cousins on one side. That's a lot. Scotty Whip says I have 158 second cousins. I know like 10 of them. I don't think I know how many second cousins I have, but I know a lot of them. And that's the one thing when you grow up, I guess, in a, a first gen mm. ethnic family mm. You're close with a lot of your family members. Yeah. And my family both on both sides did a really good job of taking trips to make sure that we were in touch with our family and got to know our family. The amount of times mm-hmm. my parents drove to Canada, drove to Michigan, drove to wherever we had to drive, um, there were we they did a good job of creating that family yeah. structure. Uh let's see. For the mailman said I also have around thirty five first cousins. Jesus. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot. I don't even know how we got into, oh, because of the, the funeral and stuff. Mm. Um, but there's a, another account oh, that I was TikTok. talking about. Well, People sorry. doing wild things and stupid things on TikTok. This one I actually think was real, and it's, it's so unfortunate that it was real. There's a guy who has a, a handful of videos, five or six, where he goes, he'll go to whatever fast food or big box store, and he'll pay in coins, and he'll just dump out a bag of coins after the person check after the person rings them up. And it's just such an a hole move to get a couple extra clicks on. It would be funny if you did that, and you're like, "Just kidding! Here's the money." And who knows? There he may cut the video at yeah. some point. It's like Scotty B paying with uh, Scotty B from Elvis during the morning show pays th- for things. With which $2. is it, which I'll I'll tell Scotty to his face. It's an asshole move. $2 bills, yeah. It's because most people don't even know a $2 bill exists. Especially a lot of cashiers are like 16. And, and I love, like, you know I love Scotty. Yeah. I've but, spent I've spent more holidays with Scotty than anyone who's not been related to I me. I know. Um, and I love Scotty. But paying with $2 bills is an a-hole move. Mm-hmm. Because now, especially with like a younger generation who doesn't even really deal with cash. Well, yeah, so many stores don't take cash. You've got to now explain that this is a real bill. Like other than working at Z one hundred, I think I've may have seen may have seen a two dollar bill once in my life. Scotty B for Sam and William when Sam from Elvis's show got married, he gave her all of her gift in two dollar <laughs> bills. 
She said they were opening it, all their things, and like, what is this thing so thick? And she knew immediately. Yep. Yep. But there is, I will give, uh, Mellow FM has a good point here. Scotty's effort to do that is pretty amazing because you have to go to a bank often no, and Mar- ask for $2 Mar- bills. Mar- comment is even better. Scotty's goal is to be annoying. <laughs> That's also both Mellow FM and Martha, 100% true. Okay. Now, are you done talking about World Star? Sure, yeah. Oh. You're not on. You have to have this to transfer. Okay. So what do you want? Where do you want to go? Bring what are you trying back. to do? I made a full screen. Now okay. I'm bringing this list back. Oh, okay. Cook Book Club. Is that full screen? <laughs> this is. No, no one else is seeing anything different, by the way. No, I had full screen on. Oh, okay. So if you want to go back and forth, you can just do this. And it automatically does it for yeah. everybody? Yeah, yeah. The other screen, this one that we're seeing, we're seeing two screens right now. This is so you can preview one yeah, yeah, I before know you pull it over. Like that. Man, I'm on day two of not taking my allergy medicine. Why? Because uh, I decided to do a little self-experiment. Okay. I'm actually okay. So far. But I did pick up my allergy drops from Dr. A's office, and I I didn't start taking them yet, but I will. And it's going to make my mouth itchy because i got to put trees in my mouth, basically. All right. Um, before we get into cookbook club, why don't you tell people about your results from your ultrasound yesterday? Oh, so, well, I don't want to get into actual results yet until I finally see the specialist, which will most likely be tomorrow. But I'll explain everything that happened. So, um, I was able to get an x-ray and an ultrasound yesterday. And then this morning, I got an MRI. And from everything that I've heard from the nurses and the doctors that have seen me, uh, there's a very good chance it's a fully torn ACL. It's not confirmed. No. Nope. Uh, not it's Achilles, sorry. Um, not confirmed necessarily yet, but this morning I got my MRI. And it's about a 25-minute process. And they're like, you don't have to move in the MRI? No, you're not supposed to move at all. Yeah, a CT, they like make you like breathe in, no, no, breathe no, out, you... MRI, you just lay there. Was it open? Um, I wasn't fully in the tube because it was my basically the my lower leg that they were checking out. So with an MRI, if you've never had one, they have to really secure that part of your body oh, it. so it doesn't move at all. So it was in this like weird brace contraption with these like tiny oh. t- tiny sandbags. Like the murder movie we saw the trailer for. Kind of, yeah. Like the guy in the MRI and then the monster gets him. Yes. Um, so he did all of that. Slid me in uh, up until basically my, my, my waist. And if you've ever had an MRI, it's very loud. It's yeah, a very that, loud that, machine. I've, you know what, though? I had to get an MRI on my lower back, and we were still working morning radio, and I slept. They were like, it is so rare that people sleep through these. I almost fell asleep. I slept through it. They're like, that's the amount of banging that happened? They put headphones on me. Yeah, you can pick the music. Which, he wasn't getting the music to work, and I told him, I was like, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. Um, but he kept coming in through the headphones. Yeah, To, yeah, like, yeah. tell him to give me updates. If he didn't come in every, I don't know, five minutes or so into I'll my ear, now. I would have been passed out. But- um, after the MRI, the guy comes in and obviously usually the techs aren't allowed to diagnose you, right? That's just, they're supposed they to not, not allowed do that. to. So he comes in and he says, listen, I can't tell you what I saw necessarily. Um, and I'm not going to diagnose you, but <laughs> was, you should probably take it easy on that leg Anthony. as much as you can. I have been, what have I been doing? No, you won't put on your peg leg. I'm not going to put on my peg leg now. I don't really move around that much. No, but you don't realize every every step you take. <laughs> every move I you make? You take like a 15 steps to get down the hallway. Yeah, but I'm not going to wear a, I'm not okay, going to. but you don't put on your peg leg to go in and out of stores. Depends. You didn't put it on yesterday. You didn't no. put it on to go into the x-ray place, into Cadoba. Yeah. And those were, uh, I don't know, 30 steps each. Anyway, um, <laughs> bless you. I am going to get a boot. And oh, that's what he said. He said you should really take it easy until you get your boot. Tomorrow. Which I which should come in tomorrow. Um, but, yeah, that's that's where I'm at right now. I will have another appointment this afternoon with my, apparently, my general practitioner, who I didn't <laughs> I know told. existed until yesterday. Uh, then I've got, hopefully... It'll stay on the books. I've got an appointment tomorrow morning with an actual specialist, with a, f- a sports a injury assistant, a sports injury specialist, uh, and then after that, I'll be able to be on their books. So surgery is happening. Oh yeah, yeah. It'll, Some I'm, people I'm can hoping, heal without it. I'm hoping it'll happen 
um, next week, ideally, maybe early in the week. It's just, it's unlikely. It's kind of crazy. If you have a Friday appointment, they're like, well, honestly. I don't want a Friday appointment. No, I'm saying tomorrow. Oh, yeah, yeah. So when I went in for my hand appointment, it was a Monday, Mm -hmm. to see the specialist. And he was like, all right, I have a, I got appointments on Wednesday to do a surgery. So I hope it's like that. It was very quick. Uh, Your mom is in here yelling at you to put on the peg like. It happens. My mom also got really mad when I told her I was going to be going to the gym. Well, if it's just arms. That's the thing. I'm going to be sitting down. I mean, I could do it like right now. If I was doing bicep curls, I'd be fine. Um, Milwaukee Tom said, maybe if those biceps weren't so (laughs) heavy, this wouldn't have happened. Maybe. Oh, your boot's going to come today by 8 p.m. That's great. That's good news. And you're going to wear it tomorrow. Yeah. I have no problem wearing a boot. I really don't. Uh, let's see. Heather on Long Island said, Anthony is allergic to paperwork, and yet here he is and probably has a file and notes for every call. I've actually been doing an okay job of, of taking notes you and making been. all these appointments and, and doing all the things I've got to do. Carla Marie's helped a lot. I know, but, and I'm not, like, I'm not trying to rip into you right now. Can't but... wait to get ripped into, because that's how that starts. <laughs> and I think it might be all men, all men, but listen, like, the way you start a call with someone or just, like, no, you're nice in the beginning and oh, not yeah. that you're not nice. That's not what I'm saying. You do a shitty job at explaining everything. There's a great, you say, I got this, this, this. You're just like, one of the places you called, you said something like, hi, how's your day? Yeah. They said, I think I tore my Achilles. What call is this? I forget what it was, but like you weren't like saying what you needed. I why? think you're making that up. No, I did not I'm say, telling you. I didn't say hi. I tore my Achilles. There you was liar. One, no, I swear there. It wasn't that exactly. But there was one exactly. place. Where you were like, I love that you're quoting me and then saying it wasn't that exactly. I, it you didn't was. actually say that, but yeah. It was just like something. I'm like, just give them all the information up no, front. No. <laughs> and this is where Carla Marie and I, uh, so one of the things that Carla Marie does, and you've probably seen it on the show, but Carla Marie will butt into my phone conversations. Not out loud. To you. No. Not to them. I don't start talking to the people. I'm on speakerphone. No, but I'm like. And. I'm sure it's very annoying, but I don't want you to forget things. It is 100% things. annoying. Um, I have gotten every <laughs> bit of information I've needed from every phone call that I've had, and it's been fine. Not everyone needs to know everything. I need to get specific information from the people I'm talking to, and that's it. Well, I don't know if you remember this, but when you had the call with insurance last week, I told you, ask them if this primary care physician on your card is the person you have to go to. I don't remember that at all. Yeah. I don't remember that at all. I never, that name on my card for my primary physician, I didn't even know that person existed. I know. And then the crazy thing is, I got the card a couple years ago, their office is now different. Their phone number is now different. So I had it's to then crazy. like go around and try to find this this person who I'm sure is a wonderful doctor. I've just never seen them in my life, and my insurance won't accept any referrals that don't come from that person who I've never met. It's wild. It's a it's a weird situation. Again, I'm learning the whole system. Thankfully, this is the first time I've really had to get this involved with my insurance company and doctors and whatnot. Um but I'm learning the system. There are some growing pains. I probably <laughs> wasted like a day in it. Maybe I'd say if I was doing this again with the knowledge that I know now, I would have saved at least two business days. Yeah, that's fair. At least two business days. Um, Diva Woman said, I swear I'm listening to me and my husband. Coast to Coast Kiara. Kiara yep. Coast to Coast Kiara said, I do that. And then my husband gets stressed trying to hear me and them. Yes. And Scotty oh said, that's God. almost worse. Tone distracted because of CM. Yeah, it's it's. There was only one time, though, where I looked at Carla Marie while I was on the phone, and I said, stop it. Stop Zip it. it. Zip it. www.zipit.com. <laughs> Why do we... We need to watch it. Because we keep quoting Austin Powers mm. out of nowhere. Uh, healthcare infrastructure in this country needs to be 1,000 or no, 10,000% fixed. Yeah. It's horrible. It absolutely is. And there... So there are certain things that I, I understand. If you're an insurance company and you have somehow designated this person as my primary care provider, I should have known that and I should have gone to them because that's that's our go between, right? That person. Are you sure they didn't send you a letter saying that? I mean, it was on my card. So I'm saying did they send you a letter maybe at one point with maybe, a card that said maybe. this is your person? Um, but then there are other things that don't make any sense. And the one that sticks out the most to me 
is this idea that a referral from a doctor is only good for that specific doctor or office, it, which I can't imagine is a fun process for the primary care it, provider because, for example, let's say um, I go to this primary care provider today at 145, and they say, oh, yeah, you have a torn Achilles. I'm going to write you this referral to go see this specialist. If that specialist doesn't have any time on their books for the next three weeks, right. and I've got to go see another specialist, that primary care physician or practitioner has to then write another referral for the same thing for a similar type I of know. specialist. Paperwork. It's just a lot of paperwork but that's so dumb. The plus side to a situation like this is your referral is for ProLiance surgeons, any surgeon in that network, yes. and there's like a hundred of them. So. In this situation, it's yes. fine. Yes, it's so insane. Yeah. But we are going to go probably get your uh, handicap thing today. I am excited for that. Um, Can I It's use weird that? because I know that, you know, most of the time I'm an able-bodied human. I know. It is weird. So it's going to be weird for me the first couple times parking in a handicapped spot. You won't abuse it. That's the thing. Though. No, not at You all. won't abuse it. I'm but not going to use it. The time that I'm the, – the real time that I'm excited to use it because it's really going to be the only time I'm going out out is uh, when I go to the gym because – Parking spots in Seattle. If you've ever moved from anywhere to Seattle, you've noticed this. They're like real skinny. So tiny. <laughs> They're not meant for for real cars. They're all meant for smart cars. Hmm. Well, I think in most cities they're like that, but like I don't know. I don't know in New York. Not. Anytime you're in a parking garage, you're not parking the car yourself. A true. professional parker is parking. That's true. Um, so the parking spots at the gym specifically. I mean, even if you're parked properly, everyone is in the middle of their spot. You still have this much room. It's insane. Between you and the car next to you. And I can't imagine trying to shimmy out of that parking spot, mm -hmm. like once I park, um, and get the uh, the eye walk that I use, the peg leg, and trying to get set that all, all of that up. So I will be using the handicap parking at the gym specifically. I know that. And then even when we went to Costco uh, a couple days ago, Carla Marie had to drop me off at the door because there were no parking spots anywhere near. And if you've ever been to a Costco parking lot, they're like miles long. And I wasn't going to peg it was leg so long. the whole way down. I ran to the car and ran back <laughs> to get there quicker. Sorry, I got a text from my neighbor and I thought the crows were attacking. Okay, Not are we all good? I think we're good. Uh, let's see. Mel Pollen123 said, so are you going to go to the gym and work on your arms and upper body stuff? Uh, for the most part, there's also stuff I can do with one leg. And... The reason I say that, which is you're going to be like, oh, well, you don't want one leg to be way bigger than the other. There is scientific proof mm -hmm. that if you work out one leg, even or one body part that has a symmetrical body part, so arms, legs, um, what? Oh. He's demonstrating arms. You're not going to develop muscle in the body part that's not working, but you can actually... Mm -hmm reduce the amount of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Atrophy. Atrophy yeah, my, from the non-working leg. My surgeon, when I had my hand surgery and physical therapy basically told me the same thing. Like when I was in a cast in this hand, I could do weight exactly. stuff with this hand. Yeah. And this is, I'm not going to do any leg stuff until I actually have my surgery and talk to the mm -hmm. doctors. Um, but upper body stuff is easy, especially because most of it's going to be yeah. seated or laying down. I know. I think like when we got injuries. Almost all of it actually seated or laying down. Like my injuries that I got in the 90s and 2000s, it was very much like don't move, don't do anything. Mm -hmm. And now it's like be as active as you can be with the injury because it heals the injury and keeps everything else uh, super strong. So. Yeah. And the, the interesting thing is, not the interesting, the obvious thing is you do everything in moderation and you do everything with a doctor's yeah. approval, if well, you will. And what's really cool is you have a friend here who works at a physical therapy yeah. clinic. Uh, Dr. Daddy yep. is a world-renowned physical therapist. Well, I also found out that my friend Jamil, um, he has a, a buddy from high school or college that specifically works on physical therapy for Achilles injuries. There you go. So I have then, his, uh, his Instagram account. He does a bunch of stuff on there as well. And then William, our friend Sam's husband, also yeah. a physical therapist who reads every new study ever. Mm -hmm. So he can give you all the nerd news. No, I'm very fortunate. I have a, a very good network of people to reach out to uh, who can help me through this process. Because it is going to be a long process. It's going to be at least six months from, from probably this moment. Um, everyone after the surgery says generally between four and six months after the surgery, you can get back to doing 
normal life things. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it takes about a full year to get back to where you were the day you injured yourself. So I've got that day, June 7th. Try, marked, I, in my, marked in my calendar for I, June 7th, 2024. I broke my hand in February. Had surgery. I'm trying to think when. It was probably early spring. So I, I don't know. I think my hand recovery was almost four months too. Yeah. I mean, if you're having surgery, if they're cutting you open, they're, they're stitching things together, you had screws put in there. Yeah, it's, it seems like, oh my God, that's so long. It is a long time, but once you're in it and you're progressing, mm -hmm. it yeah. goes. It's, it's funny. There are a lot of people who are sending a lot of really nice messages, almost like condolence messages. And uh, it's weird. And maybe my, I'm sure my mindset will fluctuate. Mm -hmm. My mental state will fluctuate as this, this recovery journey goes on. But uh, I'm actually in a pretty good place. Well, I think a lot of things, like, you were kind of, like, beat around by the medical system. So it's like, I got into a doctor. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. They, like, beat you down to the lowest and then hang, like, you get a little cookie and you're like, okay. Yeah. But, no, I'm actually in a pretty good place. Like, I know that it's not going to be an easy recovery. Mm -hmm. But I'm not, I don't necessarily shy away from physical challenges. And this is just another physical yep. challenge for me. I'll, I'll go through the surgery. I'll do all the research and talk to all the doctors I can possibly talk to for the best way to recover and to gain strength back. And I'll just, I'll come up with a plan and that's it. You know, we got to get you those, uh, PRP injections. That is one of the doctors does do that, that mm -hmm. I spoke to. If you're, and if you're unaware of what that is, PRP is basically when they take blood, they centrifuge it. Then they grab your, uh, white blood cells, white blood cells Plasma. and then, inject it into an injury site or sometimes they do it for your hair um and it's Face. and it's supposed to help regrowth in that area kobe did it back in the day on his shoulder i believe so it's platelet rich plasma and it's mm. like the idea is to rebuild collagen and it's your own blood nothing else mixed in yeah. it's just the white blood cells so. let's move on to the cookbook club carla Marie. okay have you heard of any cookbook clubs no. have you heard of this i've heard of book clubs obviously right it's the same idea okay it's kind of trending on the, the social medias right now, but my friends and I have one on the schedule for oh, June nice. 27th. Okay. And what happens with the cookbook club is the host, whoever house is going to be at, picks the cookbook and then essentially assigns recipes from that book to each person. And then you show up for dinner with that That's recipe. Pretty cool. It is really cool. And the idea is like, well, if I have a cookbook that my friends don't have, I just take a picture of the recipe they make it. And they're like, you know what? I just tried all this. I'm going to buy that cookbook. Yeah. So it's that idea of like getting to try new things. So we have, I think we have three on the calendar. Oh, wow. August 2nd, it's here. Okay. So, uh, you so can, I've got to go find something no, to do. No, you can have some food. You can help pick. <laughs> I can eat? You can eat. You can help I pick can the menu. I eat in my own house? Yes. It's great. It, you're, you're so lucky. But um, June 27th, we're going to Tatum's house, and we're doing Kristen Cavallari's True Roots book, which I actually have, and I'm making artichokes. Cool. That is my recipe. And... It is, it's really cool, but. Who's that woman that has the, the, she's like an older. We do this every time. Cook, cooking person. Julia Childs. No, no, no. Older than that. I want to say it's like Debbie or something, but she throws like butter on everything. The one that Elvis said it looked like when I got my hair really light. Oh, I don't know. Paula Dean. Paula Dean, <laughs> Debbie Dean, whatever. We're not doing Paula Dean. No? We only do like new age cookbooks. Oh, okay. just influencers who have cookbooks? Basically. Okay, so. Next up is Steph Curry's wife. And this is going to tie in with Coho a little bit here. Coho is Colleen Hoover, the author of a ton of books. I thought it was Coho Salmon. That's K. <laughs> no. Yeah. Coho Salmon's with a C as well. I thought you were going to talk about salmon <laughs> when you put that on the list. <laughs> no. Uh, all right, continue. So, <laughs> Because you said Lil Debbie? <laughs> Lil Debbie Dean. Yeah. Okay, so anyway, we, all of us in this same group, so it's Tatum, Lindsay, Megan, Madison, and myself. I'm borrowing, like, a lot of their Colleen Hoover books. Oh, okay. So we're turning this into a cookbook book club. Cook double book club. They wanted to make up a fun name for it. They wanted to call us the Monicas because Monica from Friends was a chef, and we all like uh, Friends. Oh, okay. And I was like, oh, she I was a chef? I, I know that. Okay. So we're going to do like Colleen Hoover conversations during our cookbook conversations. And I'm so excited. 
That's a, that sounds like a really good idea. I know. And it's like one of those things that were like trending on social media that it's like, this is actually like I like enjoyable. The, I do like the cookbook a day. I couldn't get into a regular book club because I read too slow. Facts. But, I finished two books in eight days. But uh, no. the cookbook club is a pretty cool idea. Now, I wouldn't partake because I just don't like cooking, but I think it's a good idea for everybody else. Maybe I'll talk to them. Maybe the one that's here, we can stream part of it. Like uh, the, the cooking of it? No, no, no. Like the tasting of it or something. That'd be fun. We'll see. Because I wanted them to come here in the summer so we can hang out on the roof. Yeah. So we're not going to stream from the roof, but yeah. That's pretty cool. But yeah, so with the whole Colleen Hoover thing, I read It Ends With Us, and it starts with us in 10 days. That's crazy. Those are How long are those books? I mean, like about 300 pages, huh? but they're like easy reads. Like it's big letters and a lot of pictures? No, like just... Not a lot to comprehend. Okay. Right? It's a story. It's a novel. It's not... Because you don't really read novels. No. So they're easy to get through because you're not, like, having to process theory. Not theories, but, like, when we read, like, self-help books, it's different. The only novel that I've read that was not based on some sort of historical event mm-hmm. uh, were my cousin's books. Oh, yeah, yeah. The Raffle. The Raffle. So good. And I read I read the entire, I, what you call it, anthology? Mm-hmm. Right? No. What would you call it? An anthology is when you can read each one individually without reading one before. And the raffle was a full story. Okay, so I read, but I read all of the raffle books, which now are in one uh, one exactly. novel. He released them separately and then put them. Um, but that was the only one. And even that was kind of based in, instead of historical events, in future, highly probable future events. Yes. If that makes sense. That all came true. Except Which is kind of crazy because he had Trump as the president before Trump was. It's kind of wild. The president, yeah. Um, a lot of people asked about doing a book club stream. We could do it. A book club stream. Mm-hmm. How would that work? You just get on and talk about a book. Same way a book club works. Yeah, I, guess. I would really. I don't want to spoil anything, but I'm like, I want to talk about it. it. Starts with us and it ends with us. I have a new book I'm going to read. It is from. So my friend, uh, Dr. Daddy, who has been talked about here on the podcast and on, on Twitch a lot, um, let me find the screenshot I took. He is, he is actually a really good doctor, like a very well-respected he, doctor. So <clears throat> he's a physical therapist in Red Bank, New Jersey. Mm-hmm. Okay? When he came out here in like 2016 or 2017, he went to the gym in our apartment building and had me lay on a bench and like – felt around with things, and he was like, you probably walk like this, and you do this. Like, he, like literally, like, unofficially diagnosed me. Mm-hmm. Then he was like, I'm going to find a chiropractor for you. And he researched a specific kind of chiropractor. And I think chiropractors get a bad rap, but this was, it's called ART, A-R-T, and it's the type of practice that that chiropractor does, the way they treat. They don't just, like, wham, bam, Crack Thank you, you and move on. Okay. They like, there's a lot of things that these chiropractors are certified in. So they almost do a bit of physical therapy and they can use cupping and all kinds of different things like that. So he found me, Dr. Swick, who I have now been going to for four yeah. years and also the other doctors at Dr. Swick's office who are equally amazing. And now like, I only go for maintenance on my body because I use it often and work out and all that stuff. And just to keep up with things, I, like the back pain that I had is gone. Yeah. Uh, the book that he, so my my friend Jake, who, phenomenal doctor, uh, The Champion's Comeback, How Great Athletes Recover, Reflect, and ign- uh, Reignite. So that's the book I'm going to be probably downloading on my Kindle. Okay. To get myself into like comeback mode. And I, I do think that as you go through stages in life, you do need materials around you, whether it's a book, whether yep. it's a YouTube channel, whether it's a, a podcast, a person, you do need materials around you to carry you through different processes. Like if you're trying to build a business, if you're trying to raise a family, if you're trying to do things, there are going to be tough times through that where you can then lean on some of that material to get you through. And that's what I'm going to hope this uh, this book does. I hope that when I'm having a yeah. crappy day during my recovery, I can read and say, oh, well, this is part of the recovery and I can do this to alleviate this pain or alleviate this stress or move past this hurdle. So, um, so you're going to read it on your Kindle. Probably. Yeah. I'm kind of tired of, I love physical books yeah. when I do read it. Not that I read a ton. Um, I'm just kind of 
tired of all of the books that are here. Well, that's why I'll go to the reused bookstore for you. What about it? I'll go there and get it for you. Okay. I mean, if they got it. I I got Chrissy Teigen's cookbook for like $9 there. If they got it there, then you let me know. That's the fun part about this book club is that I only had to buy one Colleen Hoover book. My friends have all of them. Mm -hmm. And the rest of them, I can just read whatever. These two had to be read in order. Do you think you can read books a second time? Like, have you ever read a book twice? I may have with Twilight. Because I know people who will read certain books once a year. They love them so much. No. I don't watch movies twice, so why would I read a book twice? I can watch a movie twice. I can watch an episode twice. Sorry, Wendy's right. Why don't we... We keep talking about rent, getting books from renting from the library. The Biblioteca? Yeah. We can do that. Uh, that chick, Ricky. How's it going? Everyone, I want everyone in here um, to just congratulate Ricky because Ricky now has her own show in Nashville. We haven't talked about it a ton because as that started, I tore my Achilles, so my, my week's been a little messed up. Um, but Ricky is crushing it in Nashville. She's been there for now two years? More than that. Has it been more than two years? I don't know about no. that. But uh, love to see our friends succeeding and doing cool things. A little over two years, I believe. So hi, Ricky. And I don't know if Zach is in the room as well, but hi, Zach, as well. Because uh, he, it's Ricky and Zach together. Mm-hmm. And they're, they're doing really cool things down there. Why does it say, what do you think on there? I don't oh, know. because I showed you where you could edit. Different things, and I saved it that way. I read off the list. Like, why does it say, what do you think? And I read off the list. I was like, I guess Anthony added, what do you think? I don't know what that's about. No, 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 no. That was a mistake. Let me get that off the list real quick. No, we should ask, what do you think? All right, what do you think? (laughs) Is that the new segment? What do you think? I can just imagine, like, an old school radio show. We're going to go around the room right now. What do you think about a crazy topic? (laughs) And then I would go, and I would go, what do you think about that baby Gronk on Instagram? Oh, God. Have you seen baby Gronk? Mm -hmm. It's pretty wild. Does anyone know, does everyone know about baby Gronk or is this like a, a really niche thing? Let me know in the, uh, the chat. Cause this baby Gronk story is actually taken off and I don't know how we got from what do you think to baby Gronk, but here we are. Which the one that's taking off is the one with the gymnast. Oh yeah. So baby Gronk, baby Gronk is a fourth grade football player with a huge social media account. And he, he's made headlines on his own. Um, but then I guess a week ago, two weeks ago, whatever it was. Well, the reason he's called baby Gronk is because he's like, he's an amazing football player. Right. And kind of like bigger than everyone else. Kind of like Gronkowski. Right. So he's baby Gronk. And he, did some social media posts with a gymnast from LSU who also has a crazy social media following. She's got like millions and millions of followers. Can't remember her name right now. But either way, it got into the the social media like well, I space. Think, and how people took it was like, she, she convinced him to go to LSU. Yeah. And people were like, baby Gronk's, Gronk is going to sign with LSU. He's 10 years old. This is going to be great when he's there. And then there was a lot of use of the word Riz and people were talking about how like, just the social media lingo of that original post was was wild. Speaking of Riz. What? It's the new generation uses it all the time. Some got, I guess. Riz I, is like flirting, charisma. It's a combination of the two. Like your game. Yeah. Like you got a lot of Riz. There were people commenting on Real one Rizzy. of the Seahawks posts that I was in. So I was like liking all the comments. And I guess I liked someone's comment. He's definitely a teenager. And he DM'd me and he was like, so since you liked, or he's in a, college i don't know since you liked my comment does that mean i get to take you on a date I just ignored it <laughs> and he responds with i know you saw this <laughs> well yeah and then i don't respond and he's like it's my birthday can you at least follow me back i don't respond and he's like can you admit my riz is good and i was like dude i got i'm dealing with the medical system i don't have time for this but i did not respond to any of that's it. smart it's smart especially because you know that anything can be taken can be a screenshot mm-hmm. you never want to get into that world but anyway What's come out now about Baby Gronk is, and not that anyone thought that their his parents weren't involved in the the rise of his social media stardom, but 
apparently his dad is very involved and actually like feeds him lines to say in some of the podcast interviews that he's done. Oh. And one of the podcasts recently um, showed almost like a behind the scenes video. They have this fourth grader, which just the idea that you're interviewing a fourth grader on your podcast, like you've really got to readjust, reevaluate your life. But baby Gronk, if you want to come on the Carlton Brady Anthony no, show. Absolutely not. Maybe he knows songs. He could play two second. Maybe. Days. But Baby Gronk is doing this interview. They, the interviewers ask him a question. He answers it. And then the dad says, no, say this instead. And then Baby Gronk says the thing. And that's like a more, you know, flamboyant. Talk about a stage dad. Flamboyant, bigger personality type of that's, response. That's Justin bieber the situation. Absolutely. And then people started screenshotting DMs on Twitter and on Instagram from the Baby Gronk account that would send these big accounts a video that Baby Gronk did, and it would say, hey, if you repost this, like, we'll share you on our story, blah, blah, blah. It's blowing up on social media. Very much as, like, a PR push for this, keep in mind, this fourth grader's Instagram account. And I have no problem. I think there is a space, there obviously is a space in a kid's life where... They need a little push from their parents, oh, right? Yeah. Like, you can ge- you can be involved in your kid's life and in sports and push them to do better, but there's definitely a line, and this line has 100% been crossed. And now football players are actually going on social media, basically blasting baby Gronk's no. dad. Well, yeah. Like, you're ruining this kid's life because— He's going he's gonna to do something terrible because he's going to think that he is above yeah. all— He's going to do something ter- terrible and ruin his whole career, and his dad's not going to be able to get him out of it. Yep. And a lot of people are saying, listen, just because you didn't make it as an athlete doesn't mean you get to leech off of your son's spotlight, and he's in fourth grade. Like, you've got serious mental problems. Right. It's not like this is a 16-year-old. But he's getting Even clout that- because he runs the account, and he get, because his child is in fourth grade, he has to accompany him to all of these podcasts, all of these press things. What state? is passing, I talked about it in the Morning Show podcast, in Home for Humanity. They're passing, like, a social media law about children and parents, but it has a, it has, right. it has more to do That's with... like mom bloggers, right? It has more to do with the parents' account. So mm. if you feature your children in a certain percentage of your social media, like my cats, right? If they were my actual kids mm. or they passed the law for cats, I'd have to create a separate um, bank account. Mm. And if I make money off of my social media... The cats have to get a certain percentage of that. And and I agree 100%. I'm saying cats because that's my situation. But I, I agree with that idea. I don't know how it would be regulated. I don't know, how, I don't know who's keeping track well, of that kind of stuff. Who decides whether you're an influencer? Who decides whether you're not? There's, a, there's a, a lot of gray area there. But I do agree that if you're an adult and you're using any children, whether they be yours or not, for your content mm-hmm. and you're profiting off of that content and you're making a lot of money off of it, the kids, A, have the right to reject that op- that content and mm-hmm. say, I don't want to be a part of it. Um, and they, have the opp- they should have the opportunity to at least get some of those funds directly to them because you can always make the argument, oh, well, I'm the parent, I'm the parent and I'm going to take care of my kids with the money. Right. They should have at least a percentage that is designated for them when they are 18 years old. Well, yeah, and it's the same thing with, like, kids in Hollywood. What is the what is the difference there? Mm-hmm. There isn't. No, that is the weird thing about the, the mom and dad bloggers, the parent bloggers out there, is the use of children for your content. Now, you can use your children, like, for example, let's use Danielle Monero, mm-hmm. who's one of our best friends. She's going to be visiting us in a little bit. There have been topics that Danielle Monero has pitched or talked about on Elvis Duran's radio show that obviously are about her kids. Mm -hmm. But her kids are not being necessarily exploited through a video or through their their likeness or image or anything like that. There's a very big difference there. And as they got older, she would always, like, there were certain things, I think she would ask them, or still ask them before she talks about stuff on the air. But it's different when you're saying, hey, this thing happened in my life and I'm going to talk about it. So all of those parent bloggers, the mommy bloggers, the daddy bloggers, if they say, hey, my kid is having, you know, a breakdown today, or throwing a tantrum today, Mm -hmm. this is how I handle it, 
That's totally fine. Yeah. But if you're filming your kid doing anything, be it tantrum, being it great, great behavior, whatever it is, and then you're profiting off of that, there's something dirty about well, that. Well, I first posted off, Adriana. I'm going to get money off of her. <sighs> but, but again, this is where I talk about gray area, right? Like you're allowed to post pictures of you and your family. Right. That doesn't mean everyone in that picture gets a percentage of what you're posting. Yeah, don't tell them that. Um, but there, but I think we need to figure out some sort of line, and I'm sure there'll be a debate as to which side of the line certain things are on. But there is an exploitative, exploitative, is that a word? Um, exploitative. Part of exploitative. this parent content creation. And all I know is I am so happy that I did not grow up in the generation of constant pictures and videos public i do public. but also i'm like no oh, man way. i wish we had so many there's so many memories that we don't get to watch but you don't have to no i know that I, i'm i'm not like oh i wish we had all of this because i feel like the cons are worse would they weigh way, they way but, outweigh the the pros but we i think about like all like the videos we have of like adriana and michael mm -hmm. and like special moments and stuff and i'm like how do I even, I got to go into my parents' closet, dust something off, then go get it, go to CVS and get it turned into something else to be able to watch it. Uh, Morgan says, I have so many friends where you almost wouldn't know they have kids because they don't share kids publicly yeah. on social media. And she says, I respect that. I, man. It's tough. It is tough. I understand it. You want to be a, just like you're a proud cat owner. You want to be a proud parent. Mom. No, when I'm when I'm comparing you to actual parents, I'm not going to call you a mom. Cat mom. <laughs> I'm not saying mom. Okay. Cat mom. I understand that you, you want to be, you're proud of your kids. You want to show them off, which again, like I said, I don't know where the line is, but I think we all know when children and pets sometimes are being exploited for likes and clout. I'm not saying you do that sometimes. Um, but I can't imagine a world where I would get to be an adult and then have an account somewhere, whether it's an account my parents made mm -hmm. for me or their own accounts, where everything that I went through in my life is on that account. Yeah, but it's private. I mean, you could go. It oh. could be private. Oh, I'm sorry. I because I think I would make a separate one for my kid that's private, and they can decide what to do when they turn 18. Maybe. I don't know. It's or, just, it's, it's real weird. Uh, Lisey says, I only share with close friends um, in a private account, not public. Yeah, there's, and listen, parenting obviously is a thing that everyone has to figure out on their own. But as a society, I think we do need to be like, hey, you're going, you're a little, getting a little crazy here with all of these posts and you're clearly profiting off of your child and there's something dirty about that yeah. when your child doesn't consent to it. Or enjoy being a part of it. Mm -hmm. So baby Gronk's dad, at the moment, big POS from everything that we've seen. I think like, I know, I think of Little Spoons. It's a uh, food for babies now. Mm -hmm. Little Spoons. Little, okay. Or little, little, or Little Spoons. It's like baby food. Okay. Organic, healthy baby food. And if I was like, if I had a baby and they were like, we want to do an endorsement with you, I'd be like, okay, I'll put a percentage in my kid's bank account. And- and I think there, like I said earlier, there is a way to do it that could maybe be a little more ethical. Where, yes, down the road, your your child is going to have a direct benefit of that that partnership. Because let's say... Because I wouldn't... Like, it's the cats. Like, I wouldn't get Litter Robot campaign if I didn't have correct. them. But also, they live here rent-free. <laughs> and they can't spend money on their own. <laughs> they have no choice. Yeah, like when they turn 18, they're not going to move out. So <laughs> Correct. Um, but I think there's a, a pretty cool thing you could do there where you say, all right, well, we're, I'm gonna split, because I would not get this content without my child, we split it 50-50, right? And then that 50% that the child gets goes into some sort of high-yield savings account. And who knows? I mean, if you're making, there are some influencers out there that can make, you know, $50,000 a post. If you're putting yeah, even even $1,000 per post on the side for your child yeah. in a high yield savings account, that by the is. time that kid gets to be 18, I mean, you're going to pay off their college. They're, they can choose what they want to do with it. But, but they but still may be mentally effed from the years of social media. So. Most likely will be. So, But I think we're all going to be mentally effed because of social media. Yeah, we're there already.
And I, I do hope, I don't know if it's this generation of, of what is it, Gen A? They're, they're alive right now, right? Alpha. Gen Alpha? Mm-hmm. We're back to the top. Maybe it'll be the, the beta generation if that's next. I do think at some point they'll just know how to handle it. And it'll be so ubiquitous that it's not weird anymore. I, and that's what a lot of people talk about millennials. Because, like, we are that same generation that, like, had nothing and also got the internet. Mm-hmm. And we're, like, so... This group of us, right? There's no one in the world that can before us or can after us relate no. to what it's like to have technology completely change your life. That is very much a Gen X and millennial yeah. feeling. Uh, Murgan1990 said, but what if it's not about money at all? Do either of you mm. wish your possibly embarrassing childhood moments were out there on the internet? No, and that's, I, don't think I, I will always go back to that. I don't, here's the thing. If I was a teenager, exactly. I probably would have been embarrassed. Maybe. You would have been, because, te- lot because we would be, em- like, teenagers are often embarrassed by their parents to begin with. But, and if their parents are sharing their embarrassing moments publicly. Now, I'm, I'm saying this as this is me personally. Yeah. My personality was always just, like, self-deprecation, like, fell in front yeah. of the whole school pep rally, laughed it off, like, whatever. Mm-hmm. There was, there were... I don't know. Like, I, I wasn't the kind of kid that would be like, if there was a photo of me pooping my pants at three years old, I think that would be funny. So, but that's me. That's you. That that's is not, me. I don't think that's most people. No. Because um, I know growing up, when I was a teenager, like, the last thing I wanted was any attention at all. Oh, give it to me. Well, yeah, we, we can see that. <laughs> but I want, okay. These. Uh, and then there was another, hold on, there was another message I wanted to read. Oh, Vicky said, at this point in my life, my Instagram is mainly pics of my daughter slash family, but it's a private account. I wouldn't open that to the world. Yeah. And obviously that's a very different thing when you're doing it privately privately for your friends and your family. That's very different than opening it up to the world, trying to get trending because of your kids, and trying to get promotions and partnerships because of your kids. Well, uh, Baked Bean 21, thank you for the follow. Uh, my sister posted a, vo- a video of Adriana laughing, a video in the bath, and she was like, dude, share this. Not and not in like a let's make her famous kind of way because whatever we also I would love to make this. You famous. would have to be famous to make someone right. else famous. And I was like, no, I'm posting this to my own Instagram. I want the views <laughs> because it was such a cute video. Yeah. But uh, so the generations, so generation Gen Z, yes, is from ninety five to two thousand nine. I still say that's because my nieces are ninety six, mm-hmm. and on some things they're they identify as millennials. They're cusp. Yeah. Um, but generation alpha is from 2010 to 2024. Yeah. Yeah. And there, so, so beta is the next one. Yeah. Which is such a weird, because beta we use often in technology. Yeah, that's true. We didn't use millennial. You know, alpha is a a thing used in technology as well. I know, but we use like the general public uses beta. Yeah. Um, beta will be born from 2025 to 2039. Oh, they're not even born yet. Beta fishes. They're not even born yet. No, because huh. because Alpha goes through twenty twenty four. Okay, and there is also going to be a difference, by the way, um, between and maybe these are the three stages, right? You have Gen X, who were for the most part adults when the internet became a thing that all of us were using, but were not past the point, but like in college if they went to college or were in their jobs already so it wasn't like a they didn't grow they didn't a natural thing you had fun with right yeah. it was like this new technology i have to learn at yeah. work then you have millennials who we were the first generation that really grew up with it but we also remember a very specific time a remember? distinct time in our lives before the internet and computers and the digital world took over our lives i remember the day our gateway I always forget, 2,000 or 3,000 got delivered and had the cow print on the box. But there's also a very big difference in that type of internet Mm -hmm. and the internet we have today and the technology that we have today. Oh, absolutely. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah, we grew up with it, but we, I mean, it was a process to get online. It was a process to even have a computer. Now it's so ubiquitous that it's just part of life. The 15-minute morning show from this week, from Elvis Duran at the morning show, yeah. they had Spencer, Danielle's son, who's eighteen, about to turn 18, going away to college on there, and he was talking about how, like, it's so different than when they went away to college or went to college because of technology. He can communicate with his family. He can FaceTime. And Scary's talking about how 
when email came out, he was <laughs> in college, and yeah. they made everyone at the radio station gather around this one computer to talk about electronic mail and how they were all going to share this one email address to send electronic mail to one another. Uh, Fred the Mailman says, oh, I definitely had fun with the early internet as a Gen Xer. We I launched love- AOL. That's fair. That's very true. There was a moment when, because when, we were listening to the same podcast as we were driving to and from uh, my appointment yesterday, when Scary sh- uh, shared the story of gathering around the computer and kind of like learning how this thing worked. It it unlocked this core memory of mine where I remember it was between second and fourth grade. There's second, third, or fourth. I don't remember the exact grade, but I remember this moment where there was a weird time between typewriters Mm -hmm. and personal computers. Yeah where there was a a product called a word processor. Mm -hmm. And we had one in my elementary school. And I I very specifically remember the teacher gathering all of us around and explaining what this box did. And it was basically, uh, it looked like a a printer almost Mm. with a keyboard. Mm Mm-hmm. And then it had a little LCD screen. Yeah. The green, the old school, like Game Boy LCD screen, right? With 8-bit graphics. And you would type on it. And her whole thing, because obviously my teacher grew up with typewriters. Right. I didn't. I was in second grade. I've never used one of those things. Um, but that. she was explaining. And I think they actually brought a typewriter in to show the differences between, like, the old technology and the new one. It's crazy. But I remember this very brief moment in history where the word processor was, like, a revolutionary... <laughs> piece of technology and it didn't survive because obviously very quickly computers became a thing so you didn't need a a, you didn't need a box to just print but it was it was basically an electric typewriter which gave you the option of deleting making edits and then hitting print it was just kind of crazy to think like what's next and it's very similar to remember uh before between cds and mp3s there were a couple other technologies Mm. there was mini disc was a big one. But did they play full songs? I remember having... Oh, no, mini disc. Yeah, you could put full albums on there. Yeah. I only had the... We talked about clips. Hit clips. Hit clips. Yeah. Wait, Kate Parm said, do you remember when they would send us AOL minutes on CDs yes. in the mail? But why? I remember this, but could you... You had to pay for AOL? But not yeah. really. It was like XM where they would just like make you... Yeah, they would... Every, like, every week, you'd basically get a new CD in the mail that was like... A month of free AOL. But here's how crazy that concept is. They were using snail mail to send the internet to people. It's so stupid. <laughs> what a weird, it's a weird concept. Wait. What do you think about it today? Fred said, if you wanted to live chat from a college computer to a person at another college, you would ping them and okay. then finger them <laughs> and then it would connect. I was a computer science major when I started college. It's in, like computer science majors back then had to know how everything worked basically because it was still so new. The user interface for a computer was disgusting back then. When you think of how you actually got on and used it, and that's one of the time that's one of the things where that Apple did a good job of, and why Apple took over personal computing for a little bit was because they had the mouse and the keyboard, or the, all of them had keyboards, but the mouse was like a a very oh. um revolutionary product mm-hmm. that remember? allowed you to just point and click and drag. I remember, I think it was one of my older sisters had a laptop, but it didn't have a trackpad. It had that little red fuzzy thing in the middle of the keyboard. Oh my God, it's the best laptop of all time. And I, The IBM would, ThinkPad. And she would let, but it would be out in the 90s. It was the It was 90s. a laptop? It was a laptop and had the red fuzzy thing in the Mm -hmm. middle of the keyboard. And that's how you would just click through programs, but you could also play, it was like Snake or some other game on there, and she would let me play it. So, by the way, that that still exists. Lenovo is the brand. But does it have the red fuzzy thing? And it has, it's like a a little eraser. But what is the point? It's a mouse. It's, you push it around. why not use a trackpad? Oh my God. Have you ever used one? Why? Yeah. I just, I was the one that started this conversation about you. No, but I, you said your sister had one, but you yeah, clearly but, have not. No, I would play with it, but not as an adult. Oh my God. And as Didn't an adult, one of your it's computers so much. Have this? Yes. Yeah. So at Seton Hall, and Seton Hall, I will say, this is not a Seton Hall Rutgers thing. 
um, has been very good about partnering with technology companies mm. and providing technology to the student body. And it, it's easier because we're a much smaller school. Right. So we were one of the first schools that had campus-wide Wi-Fi, one of the first schools that had uh, a Facebook account. Mm -hmm. We were also one of the first schools that gave out laptops to every student that, that came into the school. Do that? I don't know if they have to anymore. Right. I really like don't know. But we would get the, the IBM, at the time it was the IBM ThinkPad, and it had the little eraser cursor in there. I remember you having it at like Elvis' show. It was the best. Let me pull it up on the screen in case you don't know what I'm talking about. I so instead of using the trackpad, right, the pad that you use your it. finger, I am. Just a heads up, I got a bounce in five minutes. Yep, Lenovo. You can, you can, take, you can uh, close out the show. <laughs> you, you did an extra three and a half minutes of work. I'm not, it's not the work. Um, here, let me pull this up. Oh, Where I is, see it. Uh, there. Oh, God, they were these stupid pop-ups. I think our website has a pop-up to sign up for. Yeah, but it's ours, and it's fine. <laughs> okay. Well, why would you put it on the flat one? Go to the other screen. No, no, I need no, to. No, it said it. Uh, the original, the first photo. I'm going back to it. It won't expand. I need so to find an expanded picture. What time's your doctor appointment today? One forty-five. You're wearing your leg stick. Sure, yeah. Okay, I'm pulling it up. It is available soon. Oh over my the god! Exact spot. I swear, men don't know how to use the internet. <laughs> I'm just trying to, to find a picture that expands. So go. You do it. You do it, Steve Jobs. <laughs> Marie Wozniak. I say you're the Wozniak to my. <laughs> Carla Woz. Oh, Carla Wozniak. What an ugly name. I hope that one of his daughters isn't named Wozniak. Okay, or Carla. well, there's the first one. Okay. I did it in the, literally the first thing. Oh, my God, I'm so smart. Okay, so let's expand this here and go to the web. You're not going to see us for a second, but there's too many, <sighs> too many buttons. Okay, see, that's why I wanted a bigger picture. Woz. Why don't you zoom in on it? Do I do this? There we go. Oh, God. Accept the cookies and move on. <laughs> Anthony. <laughs> I'm trying. It's not letting me scroll. Look, you're seeing it. It's not letting me do anything. Okay, so there's a little red button in there. Okay? And, and you can like use that. Felt, not felt. No, it's like rubber. No, it was soft furry. Okay, well, then they definitely, I think you're making that part up. But oh. there's a little red button in the middle of that keyboard. I'm going to go back to our screen now. <laughs> and what you would do is instead of using the trackpad like this to click on things, you could just put your finger on there and move it ever so slightly, just like that, and it would control the mouse. And on mine, at least, there were two additional mouse clicker buttons, the, the left and the right, yeah. right under that, like in the middle of the keyboard. Oh. So everything you did was right here. It was amazing. I actually, every time I go to look at laptops, I still look at this one because I'm like, maybe, maybe I can get myself to buy another. Yeah, I don't know. Although I will say the annoying, like the trackpad that they have on my MacBook Pro is so big that when I'm typing, I sometimes hit it and it's annoying. Mm -hmm. And when I guess it's typing, they make these computers nowadays so sharp on the edges that my, <laughs> I swear my arms are like sore. Uh, let's see. Christian Nicole <laughs> says, yes, they were not furry. Carla Marie. It was furry. You may have rem like thought of it as furry as a child. Yeah. I don't know not, why you would do that. Not furry like a... Like a stuffed Shag animal? Shag rug. It was like, not felt. There's another material. It was it was like a texturized rubber. I'm t I mean, I had it, so I don't know. Maybe. It, well. What did I just do? Uh, Chris said, I'm 27, and I use the same one as Anthony. And Lisa says, the older ones were felt-ish. Thank you. I'm talking about the one from the 90s. I'm not talking about okay. now. L yeah, Lisa said uh, that their mom had one back in the day. But either way, it was a phenomenal piece of technology. I feel like every, they might own a patent on it because I feel like every laptop should have that. Yeah, now they're rubbery. Ooh, they look so weird though. Like, oh, Put that on the, just show the camera. It looks creepy. And are there the two buttons under it still? No. Okay. So yeah, that's the little guy. Interesting. It's, it was just so much easier having your hand right there on the keyboard. You didn't have to like do this. No, it's which I'm making. I'm making this two-inch movement sound like it's the worst thing in the world. But 
Oh, it's called the nipple mouse. Is it really called the nipple mouse? This is the nipple mouse. If you've never seen one before, it's pretty hard to guess what it actually does. Nestled in between the keys of your keyboard, the rubbery red dot sticks out like a sore thumb. The pointing stick, as it's also called, That's is a way to control your laptop. Developed by IBM in the 80s, has an alternative to the trackpad and mouse. It was designed to keep your hands hovering above the keyboard. This way you could switch between typing and moving the cursor faster without moving your hands. So Jess from Minnesota brings up exactly why I oh. started missing this feature. And I never thought about it until this moment. She said, the red dot is nice for flying. You can keep your elbows tucked in. And I remember trying to edit mm -hmm. a lot of audio on a plane. And it's not easy because there's a lot of things you've got to do, mm -hmm. especially if you're dragging and dropping audio files onto a main track. Man, that thing, I, I specifically remember thinking to myself as I was editing like, like this. Yeah, it's torture. I like, oh, I would love to have the, the nipple mouse. Especially in a middle seat. The point stick? Is that what it was? Nipple mouse. No, no. What was the other one? I don't remember. It's nipple mouse. Pointing <laughs> it is, stick. It is funny because in my Seton Hall group chat, which is almost entirely about Seton Hall basketball, mm -hmm. every now and then someone brings up, because we all shared that experience. Right. Every now and then someone brings up the nipple mouse. It's time to get out of here, Carla. Yeah, Marie. I got to go. I have a call. Carla Marie's got to get out of here. We'll be back on Monday. Hopefully, I'll have some more information but about- But there's a chance you have surgery Monday. There is a chance. Hopefully, we have that. And Monday. that's the one thing you can get out of here, and I'll I'll explain uh, the rest of this to everyone because you know about it. The one thing I will say is um, we are going to ask for your patience in the next week or two, mainly because we might have to cancel some shows or podcasts last minute depending on how- this the schedule plays out with surgery and doctor's appointments. Like today, I had to get in for the earliest appointment possible, which meant I could have missed today's show. Um, and all of that is because I want to get this surgery out of the way as soon as possible so that I can start the recovery as soon as possible. So over the next uh, couple of weeks, just be patient with us. We will obviously keep you posted on everything that's going on through social media and through our newsletter. And, uh, Hopefully, we'll see you on Monday. Peace out.